Talking Transport is a project which enhances people's participation using public transport. It's, it's an idea that's, that's come from that not everyone can read and write and we do need to focus on a whole lot of alternatives when it comes to um, people's needs. I think for the broader community, if, if we haven't communicated with people with disabilities before, I th I, I'm not sure that I'd call it fear, but perhaps apprehension and, and that feeling that you, this is something I don't know about and I don't know how to do it. And by people with disabilities leading the way with their communication boards, it helps to break down that apprehension on behalf of people like taxi drivers or even people, other customers on the bus. It started with Talking Taxis, which was an initiative launched in Melbourne with uh, the Victorian Taxi Directorate, City of Maranong and Scope. And I learnt of that at a, at a presentation in Melbourne and came back with the idea that, you know, this was a good project and what could we do to, to include it here in Wellington. When we looked at them closely and we gave them to some of the people in our region to use, we realised that they were having difficulty using them because a lot of the destinations on the communication boards weren't applicable to people living in a regional area. So that's when we came up with the idea of possibly making an extra taxi board that was for the Wellington Shire that could be added to the kit. I'm on a, um, an advisory group to the Wellington Shire called the Wellington Access and Inclusion Advisory Group. So we came to the advisory group and showed them the taxi kit and asked the people what sort of destinations they would like to have on a Wellington board. And we got lots and lots of suggestions of places around here that they would like to have. So then we realised we really needed to get a list of the 12 most preferred places and put them onto a, a, an extra board. So when we started asking people what, what 12 photos they wanted to have on their board, we got lots and lots of suggestions, far more than 12. So then we realised that we really, we couldn't choose the, the photos, the destinations ourselves. We really needed to consult with people who would be using the boards to see what they wanted to have. And because there were so many possibilities, we decided we would devise some sort of survey to come up with the 12 most preferred pictures. It was really important for us uh, when we took on this project that we included people with disabilities at all stages of the project. I know that you know, any project that you do, the more you include people, the more they have ownership of it. And it was really important to us that we did that well. Well, that was the real challenge because most of the people we were uh, working with, the people who would be using the boards, were people who had little or no speech or speech that's difficult to understand. They had limited writing skills and they had little or no literacy skills. So none of the traditional survey techniques would be appropriate for these people to get valid responses from them. So we then set about designing a survey that these people could use, not relying on speech and not relying on reading or writing. So we had mini photos of about 50 places around sale that were on a Velcro compatible board. The people doing the survey had a small taxi board with 12 squares, 12 blank squares, and they were asked to choose 12 photos of places they wanted to go to and put them on the blank board. I think probably about 100 people did that survey. It was a really broad survey. So then we collated that information and it was pretty clear what the 12 most preferred places were. So then we came up with the idea, as well as having a Wellington board, we should also give people the opportunity to have a personal board where they could just have 12 of their preferred places, which could be their grandmother's place, their hairdressers, their doctors, their physiotherapist. Because the taxi drivers um, take people with disabilities a lot in their taxis, they thought it was a good idea. We had an opportunity when the low floor buses were introduced into sale uh, 
and we've only got two buses, two low floor buses in sale. They run on the town runs and some of the intertown services. It was really important for us to ensure that people knew what times they were on. Well, the original timetable is uh, very inaccessible because in the first instance, people will find it very difficult to read. And for people with a communication impairment or may have very poor literacy skills, they're impossible to read. This bridges the gap by providing um, information in the, t in the form of photos or pictures and by providing information in a, in a large print so it's easy to read. Well, he's more independent, he can do it on his own. Took a little bit of confidence building to get to that stage. Um, but now he's doing it on his own and, and it's great. It relieves us a little bit of um, having to run him here, there and everywhere. Well, he would show when he got on the bus, this is where I want to get off when he pays for his ticket, you know, this is the stop. Because he couldn't say, I want the bus stop, the second one on McColl Street. <laughs> um, take the bus driver half an hour to try and work that out, I think. Well, when we designed these resources, they were certainly designed for people with disabilities and, and little or no speech. But what we've found since the resources have been out in the community is that a lot of people use them. Uh, they're much easier to read than the, than the local timetables that are produced. Uh, and we've got older people using them, so senior sits are, are, are using them more. And even younger people are using them because it's much simpler for them to read. So I think any resources that are, that are developed like this uh, have a much wider use. At Aqua Energy we have used um, pictorial communication boards to assist people to be able to participate in the activities at, the, at that leisure centre. There is a, a communication board for the reception area that enables people to be able to uh, indicate to staff the activities that they'd like to do. If somebody wants to order a coffee from the cafe, um, then the staff can communicate effectively with, with people with communication impairments. There's a, a particular communication board for the gym and a number of the popular activities that people with disabilities participate in at the gym and at the swimming pool. So the, the idea of um, pictorial communication boards is, is something that can be used right across our community. It can be used in restaurants, it can be used in shops, it can be used at um, cinemas. So I guess that's a, a logical extension for, for this and it is already happening in those areas. I think probably the main strength of our project has been the focus and emphasis on consumer participation. We've consulted consumers throughout and we've involved consumers at every stage and every level of the project. For me, the main strength was to uh, increase access and participation for people with disabilities to public transport. We know that people with disabilities are one of the main user groups of public transport and uh, there were opportunities to improve uh, that through our pictorial timetables uh, and with the taxi boards. The third most important thing is that it makes our public transport system more accessible to everybody.